I just 100% completed Sonic Frontiers in about 27 hours. Should you do the same? Well, stick around to find out. I believe Sonic Frontiers deserves an award for the world's worst first impression. Yeah, we, uh, we handing those out still? We got our first real teaser from IGN this year, and it was an absolute sh** show, displaying gameplay that looked extremely empty and boring. The actual game, though, is nothing like this. In fact, it's one of the most engaging and enjoyable Sonic games I've ever played. The biggest thing is the controls. They feel so smooth, and you can even cater them to your liking. I mean, just look at this sh**. You can adjust your starting speed, initial boost, turning speed, boost turning, top speed, steering sensitivity. I mean, damn, it just keeps on going. The fans for decades have been bitching about Sonic controls. Ugh, Sonic's too slow. Ah, uh, the controls are too sensitive. The camera sucks. Mm. So Sega indirectly told us to f*** off and gave us all the control. So what's the goal in Sonic Frontiers? Well, you need to explore five different islands and find seven Chaos Emeralds in each one to beat a big boss. That's right, you actually have to find the Emeralds multiple times instead of just once per game, which may seem a bit weird, but there's actually an amazing reason for doing this. You also have to save Amy, Knuckles, and Tails, who are all trapped in cyberspace. Those are your two main goals, save your friends and nap the gems. There's also this new character, Sage, who's basically causing all the robots on the islands to come to life and attack Sonic but she's being held against her will as Eggman created her and is in control of what she does. This draws serious parallels to the Prime Minister from the Subspace Emissary, and I freaking love it. The only issue is Eggman is stuck in cyberspace and can't get out, so Sage is trying to figure out what to do. That's the basic gist of the story, and you'll also immediately notice that everyone's tone of voice is much deeper and mature. No more of that, <laughs> hey, hey, what's up, I'm Sonic the Hedgehog, oh yeah! Like, no, 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 no. Instead, the story building is serious, and it actually works because of the voice actor's stellar performances. We also start things off in a cyberspace level, which is strangely a very small part of the game. There's gonna be seven or nine to complete per island, and in these levels, you'll get rewards for reaching the goal, getting an S rank, having X amount of rings, and finding all the red rings. Normally, I could care less about finding red rings in Sonic titles, but these levels aren't the main focus anymore, and the rings are very easy to find. And you don't have to do all four of these tasks at once, which is thankfully very forgiving. In in fact, you only have to complete the missions in the open world for 100%. The cyber levels don't really matter, but we're gonna do them anyway because I'm an overachiever. And since this is an open world game, there's no live count either. The loading times on PS5 at least are pretty quick, so dying doesn't feel that bad. And right away, you'll notice Sonic Frontier's smooth controls and modernized gameplay. It leaves a fantastic first impression, especially compared to the crap we got out of Sonic Forces. And now we move on to the open world stuff. You mostly run around punching robots and completing missions. You don't have to do all these to just beat the game, but completing them doesn't feel tedious as they all take around 5 to 30 seconds to knock out. Some of these puzzles though are stupid easy, but they do get harder as you move from island to island. Well, eh, kind of, I guess. Plus, the missions open up your map screen piece by piece, so while you technically don't need to see your entire map to beat the game, why wouldn't you want to? Seeing it come together bit by bit after each mission is really satisfying. When you take out the big robots, or guardians as the game calls them, you'll get what's called a portal gear. This is what you'll use to unlock cyberspace levels, and completing missions in cyberspace levels unlocks vault keys, and the vault keys is what unlocks the emeralds. If that was confusing, here's this handy dandy chart that should show you how it all works. There you go, you're welcome, have fun with that. Now, for the smaller enemies, they'll give you rings and various other items to upgrade Sonic's skill tree, his defense slash attack stats, and be able to talk to his friends. It sounds like a lot to keep track of, but you're generously awarded most of these items from just trucking along, so you don't really have to think about it. The first place, Kronos Island, is incredibly fun to run through. There's a lot of rails and platforms that hang around in the air, but they aren't just randomly placed in the sky. No, these set pieces have been methodically crafted to create an amazing flow with Sonic's movement. Let's say you need to climb up a really tall mountain. Well, you'll do so in style, zooming across rails, springs, walls, and the like. And along the way, you'll also talk to your friends and give them more memory tokens, which gives them more of their memory. This stops the game briefly to share more of the story, and the writing is so much fun if you played the older titles like Sonic Adventure, Lost World, and the classic Sonic games since they're talked about in the past tense concept. Constantly. Yes, there's actual world building, and it's done surprisingly well. Also, holy sh**, the Sonic Boom kicks need to be in the next Smash Bros. I mean, look at that. Swear to God, Sakurai, just make this a final Smash or something. The last thing to mention before moving to the first boss is Big the Cat. Like in Sonic Adventure, we fish with the big fella, and it's incredibly relaxing and also breaks the game if you want it to. 
Another collectible you'll find are purple coins, and you'll use these to borrow Big's fishing rod to catch fish. Catching is stupidly easy. In fact, you have to find every variant of fish for 100%. But since it's so easy and the music is literally just the lo-fi hip-hop stream we've all seen on YouTube, it's easy to spend all your purple coins without realizing it. With the fish you catch, you get tokens, which, get this, lets you buy all of the items I've just talked about. There's moments in this game where you can get dozens or even hundreds of purple coins, so if you want to get all the vault keys or portal gears ahead of time, you absolutely can. But now that that's out of the way, the first boss kicks it so hard. 2000s metal music while fighting a big ass robot is supersonic. <laughs> I feel like a teenager again. This kind of music was my sh**. I cannot believe how awesome this boss is. Just the sheer scope and the fact that you actually have to try to reach his weak spots and he takes hundreds of hits to go down. This is such a massive step up for Sonic games in general. I'm really excited to see what comes next. Now, I just want you to keep in mind that I'm not 100%ing the islands yet, but if you wanted to, you can take your time and do that before entering the next place. This is not one of those kind of games where a certain content is logged until you have more moves. Nah, dude, getting 100% is actually fun as of now. So yeah, after taking out the boss, we move on to our second world, Ares Island. This one is much, much bigger and is gonna take longer to complete. Thankfully, the landscape is still relatively flat and easy to navigate, so running around, completing missions, and getting the emeralds is still fun. We're also introduced to a handful of new enemies, one of those being a shark. I can't believe this robot is just hanging out in the sand. Normally, something like this would just be a big boss. But on to the second boss, Wyvern. This guy is a giant metal millipede fella thing and he really steps things up a notch. You'll start by running across this red carpet, chasing him down as the last emerald is on his head, and once you get to the emerald, he starts firing missiles at you that you have to dodge, and you can't hit Wyvern unless you parry his slashes and leave him vulnerable. It took me a couple minutes to figure this out, but the parrying really makes a huge difference. These battles are really starting to feel like Dragon Ball Z or Metal Gear Rising, and I am so down with that. And again, the music bangs so hard. I'm honestly just excited to jam out to the Frontiers OST on a super long road trip in the future. It's gonna be great. But then we land onto Chaos Island. <sighs> okay, so this is where I start to find a couple faults. The landscape is a bit more hilly and less open, seeing as there's floating islands all over the place. This makes it harder to maintain a flow when roaming around the levels. I was actually getting annoyed when accidentally running onto a rail when I didn't want to. The missions were still fun though, but moving from place to place didn't feel as good. But what about getting to the islands? I mean, you certainly can't jump to them. How on earth are you supposed to get there? Now's the part where I get to save all of your sanity and to tell you to use the birds. You see these flying metal birds? Well, if you jump at them from below, you aren't able to lock on at all. And, <laughs> well, that'd leave most people to believe that these enemies simply can't be attacked, right? Well, guess what? You can lock on. You either need to be above the bird, which good luck doing that, or you need to parry their dive to stun them. Once stunned, you can finally lock on to them, in which direction the bird goes in, and then you can reach the islands. This took me almost two hours to figure out. And even if I did know this ahead of time, it still kind of sucks. If the birds were faster or could fly in any direction it wanted for a limited amount of time, that would have been better. But waiting to get flapped to an island to get the emeralds is very tedious and boring. This is probably the first flub of the entire entire game. And honestly, it's not that big of a deal since you only need to fly a few times. Things pick up though with this hacking mini game. Here, you need to shoot the correct colored bullets to charge up a powerful shot against this red orby mofo thing that comes out of the Incredibles. Yeah, you remember those things? But yeah, this mini game is a lot like Ikaruga, a GameCube game that nobody remembers where you had to switch colors to survive the Hellfire. Oh, and also just another tip, when you're collecting all the metal pieces for Tails, remember to run around and actually grab the ones on the floor or you'll mess up like I did and suddenly, Sonic Pinball! Because why not, right? And after that, we fight Knight, the third boss. This fella is awesome because he's got a big-ass sword, and big-ass swords are cool. I love the idea of using his shield against them to open Knight up, as you'll need to parry the shield and knock it into Knight. The bosses in Sonic Frontiers are absolutely phenomenal. It makes every previous Sonic boss look like a baby. Following that is the fourth island, in which you'll need to climb up six hilariously tall towers. Like, seriously, Seriously, it takes like 10 minutes to climb up one, and if you aren't careful, you can fall all the way down. Thankfully, that's all you gotta do to complete this island, so you'll get 100% on it no matter what. Then we move on to Uranos Island, the final one. This place is huge, just like the others, and the missions are hidden even better than before. One thing I want to point out is I no longer want to fight the big guardians. They take a lot of work to defeat just for one portal 
ring, and it doesn't feel worth fighting them when you can just fish with big. I'm so glad there's an option to do that, but the fact that I actively want to avoid the enemies is a bit of a problem. Before fighting the final boss, I also wanted to level up my stats a little bit, and decided to build up some Kukos to max out my ring count and speed. The only problem is this takes 8 bajillion years. Like, I'm not even kidding. It takes like 40 real-life minutes to level up to the max. That's because you can only level up one point at a time, and it is so laggy and slow. What's even stranger about this is upgrading your attack and defense is really fast. All your red and blue seeds are taken in at once and boom, the upgrade's done. Why isn't it also like this for rings and speed. But anyway, I quickly got the emeralds and moved on to Supreme, a giant turtle man guy. Once again, another ridiculously epic boss fight that takes a ton of hits to defeat, but once he's down, the final battle takes place, and uh, it's strangely underwhelming. Sage and Supersonic plow through a moon, and then that's it. Well, okay, that's not actually it. If you play this final boss on hard mode, then you get the true final boss, but first, I need to go back to the other islands and see what it's like to properly complete Sonic Frontiers. So I went back to Kronos Island and started completing all the missions that I missed. And it was really fun going back there, being more powered up, and I also went out of my way to get all four keys from all the cyber levels. Again, you don't have to do this, but I wanted to try it out. As breaking these levels were surprisingly easy, except for one, two. Good golly gravy in the f Navy, what is with this time requirement? It feels like this wasn't tested because it's so absurdly strict. It legit took me like 50 tries to get down. I needed to cut so many quarters, boost very strategically to maintain speed, and make zero mistakes in order to just barely make the time. And you want to know what? Even though it took a ton of tries and felt really unfair, the controls were smooth enough that I wanted to keep trying over and over. It was satisfying seeing myself get better and better over time. So once that was done, the rest of the levels were easy, and I 100 percent at the first island. So now on to the next one. And this is more of the same thing. Find the remaining missions and get the missing keys from the cyber levels. The only tricky S rank here was 2-7. The level is fairly long and has tons of awkward boost jumps to make. It was really easy to hit enemies or run into spikes, and making more than a couple mistakes kills the entire run. Once getting through that, the third island, Chaos Island, was also pretty easy to finish. Then Arenos Island was pretty much the same deal. The only thing to highlight was that I maxed out my attack and defense stats, as well as getting all the Eggman memos. Again, you don't have to do these things to 100% Sonic Frontiers according to the game, but I figured I might as well go all out. And it doesn't take that long to do these things anyway. And once that's done, we've technically done everything besides the true final boss. If we switch to the hard difficulty and fight the final boss again, the game turns into Toho, but you shoot a big moon that mutters, I'm 13 and this is deep phrases. I am inevitable. I cannot be denied gotta be honest, this is corny even for Sonic standards, even for my standards. This boss took me a few tries. It mostly just came down to memorizing where the lasers near the end are gonna fire. For how good the main bosses were, this final boss is just kind of lame in comparison. But once I finish that, I can say that I have officially completed the entirety of Sonic Frontiers. I played all the missions, fully maxed out my stats, purchased all the Eggman memos, and got every vault key from every cyberspace level. But on to the main question. Is 100 percenting Sonic Frontiers worth your time? Well, I would say yes. If you enjoy the game at its core, it's really not that much extra effort to complete everything. The only real challenge was getting an S rank in 1-2, and that's not even required. 